Hey there YouTube, welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from different comic book companies. This time, we are going to jump back over to Marvel Comics and continue our coverage over the X-Men and work on our reading order. This time, we are going to cover the Dark Phoenix Saga which of course is the time Jean Grey had turned herself into the Dark Phoenix. Well, not herself, but she turned into the Dark Phoenix. And of course, this is the first time of many when Jean Grey had died in Marvel Comics. So, if you do like today's comic book video, please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read, well please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. So in the opening of this story, Chris Claremont quickly works on showing us how powerful the Dark Phoenix is. Because you have the X-Men try their best to take her down, and they all get beat. Now. This is also showing how powerful she can be with her powers, starting with the fact that she is able to turn things into a different material, or she is able to use her psychic powers to connect with the different X-Men minds to have their brains cancel their powers. She is also able to withstood their attacks that they threw at her, really brushing it off, like what they did to her was basically nothing. They really don't stand a chance here against her, but once she is able to beat all of the X-Men, she tells them she needs to leave and she goes into space to do more things as the Phoenix. Once we come back to her, well, we are going to see her do something very huge and it is going to have some consequences. Now, before we can see Dark Phoenix cause havoc in space, we actually have to pick up with Sebastian Shaw. This is Chris Claremont reminding us what had happened in the last story. The X-Men fought against the Hellfire Club and left, but Sebastian Shaw, the leader of the Hellfire Club and who is a mutant but the world doesn't know that yet, is meeting up with Senator Robert Kelly who is going to play a role down the road in later X-Men comics. This is Sebastian Shaw trying to paint a picture that the X-Men, a group of mutants, are criminals because they attacked the Hellfire Club for no reason. To the world, the Hellfire Club is just a group of rich people hanging out. But really, an inner circle was trying to profit off the mutant race. But then, they all see the Phoenix flying up into the sky. With Phoenix flying up into space, well of course, her powers are felt or seen across the world. Spider-Man, the Fantastic Four, and Doctor Strange saw her or felt her powers from a far distance. But once she is gone, you have Beast arrive. Remember that he had joined the Avengers, but while he was chilling at the home of the Avengers, he got word about the X-Men fighting against the Hellfire Club. So he came to check out the reports, but came to find the X-Men knocked out. Then we get another page where you have Angel and Charles Xavier talking to Moore McTaggart and Banshee over a computer screen to talk about how in the last few hours, Phoenix powers have risen so high, she was the strongest mutant they have ever charted. And if she went bad because her mind is broken, she could kill everything in her path. Speaking of the Phoenix, this gives us another problem in this story, which is that she's in space now, going around flying to different galaxies, passing a space station that had Peter Corbell, a guy who is a Nobel Prize winner. He gets scared of the readings of the Phoenix, but once she reaches a certain galaxy, with her traveling so far, she needs energy so she absorbs the sun in this galaxy, which then causes the sun to explode and kill a planet that was nearby it. However, there was a spaceship that was near the planet that got destroyed. 
And this tells us that this galaxy is actually part of a certain important empire. This ship belongs to the Shi'ar Empire, which means that the Phoenix had just destroyed a planet that was near or in the Shi'ar Empire. The Shi'ar Empire first appeared with Leandra, the princess of the empire in Uncanny X-Men number 97. She was basically on the run because before she was the queen, her brother was the king and was trying to kill her because she was trying to stop him from using the Amkron crystal. The Shi'ar Empire is basically a bunch of planets of different races that fall under this empire of the Shi'ar. But getting back to the ship that is near the planet that got destroyed, they tell their queen what the Phoenix did. They try to fight the Phoenix and they lost the battle and get destroyed as well. Which then tells Eleandra that they need to kill the Phoenix if they are going to be able to stop her before she kills the universe. When we finally get back to the X-Men as they are relaxing at home after getting their butt kicked by the Phoenix, they are wondering what they can do to stop Jean Grey. But thanks to the psychic connection that Scott Summers and Jean Grey have, he tells the rest of the X-Men that she is coming back to Earth and of course, is not a good thing at all. So in the opening of the second chapter, we actually pick up with the Council of the Shi'ar Empire as they are deciding what to do with the Phoenix. Because to Leandra, she was still a good person when she first met Jean Grey as the Phoenix. But now since Jean Grey had destroyed a planet, she has to be killed because she could be a threat to the whole universe. On Earth, the president is freaking out because all of their scanners went off. And so he wants the Avengers ready to go. But the only person at home now is Jarvis, the butler of Iron Man and the Avengers, reminding us that Beast has joined the Avengers, but he is missing. We know why, because he is with the X-Men. Which of course, we see the X-Men working together right now on some kind of mind device that could help them stop the Phoenix or maybe help Jean Grey get control of her mind again. It's really Beast doing all the hard work. Storm and Cyclops are kind of there to help out. In the meantime, you have the rest of the X-Men working in the danger room to train, to take their minds off what had happened to their friend. Except at the same time, they are still worried about Jean Grey and what could happen to Jean Grey if they have to fight her again down the road. Now remember that Cyclops has a psychic connection to Jean Grey, and he knew that she was coming back to Earth after destroying a planet, except she goes to her parents' home, which makes sense. Remember that when it comes to Jean Grey, her mind is being overpowered by the actual Phoenix being, but she is still trying to fight and get control of her mind and body. So even though she comes home and sees her family, well you have the parents and her sister happy to see her, except they know something is up with their daughter and sister. They just don't know what. But after she has another breakdown, she leaves their home and then tries to go somewhere else, but she's attacked by Nightcrawler soon after. Remember that Beast had made some kind of device hoping to attack the mind of Jean Grey and as a way to help Jean Grey be able to get control of her body again. Except, the Dark Phoenix persona is still in control and being able to override the machine and be down on the X-Men. They are having a hard time trying to complete this task and don't know what to do here. There is even a point that Wolverine had a chance to kill her to stop all of this. Except, Wolverine can't do it because he is madly in love with Jean Grey and that lets a Dark Phoenix persona regain control and send him flying away so the X-Men have lost. Well, it seems they have lost, but Cyclops was not in that battle. The reason why is because he was seen as the last hope to stop her since they are in love with one another. But she is someone who can be easily talked to by someone who is very close to her 
like Cyclops. He's actually able to get through and it seems that maybe she'll become good again. Except you have Charles Xavier hit her with some kind of mind blast hoping that will work. But she turns around and hits him back. Of course, Charles Xavier is still alive. But he then tries to have a mind battle with Jean Grey. But while she is the Phoenix, this is very huge because this is Jean Grey who is way more powerful than Charles Xavier and it seems like he is losing. Except he does win but he says that he only wins because Jean Grey has stepped in to help him to beat the Dark Phoenix persona so it seems that she is cured. So once you have the story seem to be over that everything is going to be okay now they are going to have to explain what was going on with Jean Grey to her parents except out of nowhere all the X-Men are just teleported away and the big question is now where did they go? We find out that they were teleported to Iliandra's ship in space because remember in the last issue she had blown up a planet in this universe which of course made them upset but made them become scared of the phoenix thinking that the phoenix could be the one to end this universe so they are speaking about killing her to save the universe of course the x-men say no but they don't really have a choice it seems here but when charles xavier had the chance to study the history of the shi'ar empire he was able to learn that he can call a duel if they win, the X-Men can get anything they want, which is to save Jean Grey's life and go back home to Earth. So you have Eleandra meet up with the Queen of the Scrolls and the Supreme Intelligence of the Kree because they are concerned that Jean Grey will come to their galaxies and do the same thing she did in the Shi'ar galaxy. So really, they are hoping that Iliandra Imperial Guards, Imperial Guards, sorry, Imperial Guards, win the duel so they can kill Jean Grey. But while Iliandra is talking to them, well, you have the X Men in each of their own rooms thinking about the situation here. They are going to battle against the Imperial Guards of the Shi'ar Empire hoping to find a way to win to save the life of their friend Jean Grey. All the X-Men thoughts are explored and we get to see how they feel except after a few pages we really focus on the one character who is going to have a tough time going through this process which is Cyclops since this is the woman he loves so much and now she is going to be possibly killed if they don't win this battle against the Shi'ar. It doesn't help out when Jean Grey walks out of the room in one of her earlier Marvel Girl outfits. Really the second one if I remember correctly. It just makes him think back to all the times he had with her in his life and now he might lose her. Now honestly, I could sit down and break down every single part of this fight. But honestly, it would take too much for me to break down every single moment. Just know that the X-Men did not really stand a chance against these guys. At first, it seems like they could hold their own. Maybe could find different ways to beat each member of the Imperial Guard. Except when they do get separated and also the fact that the X-Men are still kind of new for the most part, they lose one by one to each member of the Imperial Guard. But this was done to set up a very important moment that is going to lead to the plot point in later stories. Of course, the last two standing are Jean Grey and Cyclops. So you have the two of them run into some kind of temple on the battlefield but both knowing they are going to lose except they are going to go out fighting and hoping for some kind of win. While they are fighting against the Imperial Guard that is when a ship that belongs to the Shi'ar tells their queen Iliandra that their ship readings are going off the chart 
which of course tells us and tells them that Jean Grey is back to being the Phoenix once again. And of course means now everyone has to stop her. So that leads into all of the X-Men waking back up and realizing that they have to deal with Jean Grey being the Dark Phoenix all over again. Except this time, they are exhausted from their battle with the Imperial Guard, but they really don't have a choice here. They need to stop her now. But all of this is being done to lead up to the moment that really changed Marvel Comics forever. Well, really, the X-Men comics to be more exact. Jean Grey had this secret plan once her, the X-Men, and the Imperial Guard had landed on this planet for battle. That there is a secret weapon that could actually kill her and she knew once they got on this planet for the battle, the Phoenix persona was slowly coming back, but it was the Dark Phoenix persona. She knows that there is no way she can keep control of her body and that she is going to have to kill herself with this machine. And she does. This is the moment of the first quote unquote death of Jean Grey. And this is where we are going to end today's video. So please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video.